Hi, Joe from Tunis Tech here, and today I have the Acer Chromebook Vero 514. It's the first Chromebook to become part of Acer's Vero brand, which is essentially Acer's lineup of eco-friendly laptops. They're made of recycled plastic and are designed to be easily repairable. Beyond being eco-friendly though, there is a lot to like about the Acer Chromebook Vero 514. It's not perfect by any measure, and it has flaws, but it is a solid Chromebook overall. In fact, it's almost as solid as my commitment to transparency when doing reviews of devices. Full disclosure, I paid for this Chromebook with my own funds. All the opinions and commentary you're about here are my own. No one, including Acer, has sponsored this video, and no person or entity other than yours truly has reviewed the contents of this video prior to its posting on the Athelian's Tech YouTube channel. With that out of the way, let's get back to the video. So what I have here is seemingly the base model of the Acer Chromebook Vero 514, which is a really long title, so I'm gonna shorten that to Acer Vero 514 for the rest of the video. The model that I have comes with the 12th gen Intel Core i3, eight gigabytes of LPDDR4X RAM, and 128 gigabytes of SSD storage. And yes, the device does come with a fan, although it doesn't get very loud unless you're doing something really intense like gaming or something like that, and we'll get to gaming in a second. But yeah, generally a quiet fan, but there is a fan. It also comes with Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2. The specific configuration is sold for $499.99. At places like Best Buy though, I have seen the configuration go on sale for $349.99. And yes, I picked mine up from Best Buy at that discounted price. As far as ports go, and I'm starting the left side of the device, there's a USB-C port, an HDMI port, and a microphone headphone jack. Going to the right side, there's a USB-A port, another USB-C port, as well as a Kensington lock. You can use either of the USB-C ports to charge the device with the included 65 watt charger. Looking at the overall design, the Acer Vero 514 is a traditional clamshell laptop, meaning not a convertible. The dimensions for it are 12.32 inches times 8.82 inches times 0.81 inches, and it's around 1.4 kilograms. From a weight standpoint, I actually think it's pretty light. I, I can see myself just putting this into my backpack and just going to places and not having any issues with it. And the model that I have here comes in the cobblestone gray color. It's a kind of greenish gray, I wanna say. There is also a little bit of texture to the overall device, um, meaning that it's not completely smooth. It's not necessarily unpleasant to the touch. It's just unique, which I don't know. I, given the color of the Chromebook and whatnot, I actually don't mind it too much. I think it, it certainly gives the Chromebook some character. Oh, and as I mentioned at the start of the video, this whole thing is made at least partially with recycled materials, including recycled plastic. I'd be lying if I wasn't a little worried about build quality upon hearing that because recycled materials are cool, but sometimes they don't necessarily make for the best build quality in laptops. Turns out though, my worry is completely unwarranted because this thing is impressively built. Like Acer built this thing to be rugged and super durable and it shows like build quality is just very, very impressive on this thing. And I wish the same could have been said about the display. The Acer Vero 514 comes with a 14 inch 1080p anti-glare IPS display. The model that I have comes with a non-touch display, but there are certain configurations of this device that do come with a touch screen. My device just does not have that. For web browsing or media consumption, the display on this thing is okay. It's, there's nothing outright unusable about it, but there are a few things that you may want to know. The display itself is definitely on the warmer side, which isn't a flaw per se, but I know it can bother some people, so I'm gonna mention it here. Also, the color can feel a little muted on the display at times, but that's not uncommon for anti-glare displays. It's just something that you're gonna have to deal with. The muted colors on the display wasn't necessarily too bad for me. It might bother some people, but it wasn't too bad for me, so I'm willing to give that a pass. But the worst part about this display, this display in my opinion, is just how dim it is. I've seen Chrome Unbox claim that the display gets around 300 nits of brightness, but it honestly feels like it's dimmer than that. I mean, the Pixel Book Go's display is supposed to be around 300 to 350 nits of brightness, and the Acer Vero 514's display looks so dim next to it. And I have both of the devices set at max brightness in this picture. In fairness to the device, the display being an anti glare display might be a part of the reason why it feels so dim. Don't get me wrong, the display is fine for using in indoor settings, but this is a laptop. Like if you're going out and about and doing stuff on the road or at a cafe or at, a, at even a remotely bright location, this display, even at max settings, is going to be rough. As I said, it's an okay display. I've certainly seen worse IPS displays get put onto $500 laptops in the past. I'm not gonna say it's the worst thing ever. I just wish it was brighter. Moving on to the inputs, the trackpad and the keyboard. The Acer Vero 514 comes with a square-shaped trackpad that is positioned at the center of the device. It's made with this thing called ocean glass, which isn't actually glass. 
is apparently recycled ocean-bound plastic. And yet, the trackpad doesn't really feel that plasticky. Like, ocean glass generally feels like something between plastic trackpads and glass trackpads. Ocean glass is smoother feeling, more responsive, more premium feeling than the plastic trackpads. But when compared to glass trackpads, it feels less smooth, less responsive, and less premium. So it's this weird in-between. I, I gotta say, I don't necessarily dislike it. I think it's kind of cool, actually. The keyboard on the Acer Vero 514 is less interesting, but equally likable. There is quite a bit of decent travel with the keys, and the layout is pretty intuitive. It is, of course, in the standard Chromebook layout. The color of the keys also do not clash with the adjustable backlight, all of which makes for an excellent typing experience. Like with other laptops from Acer Vero's lineup, the R and E key are given a unique color to signify the need to reduce, reuse, and recycle. In the case of the Acer Vero 514, it's this yellow color. It is a little tacky, but it is one of those small things that give this Chromebook character. That said, it is worth mentioning that there is one issue that I've noticed with the keyboard backlight. If you have the backlight set at low or medium brightness, you get this really noticeable coil whine. Weirdly enough, the coil whine actually goes away when the backlight is either turned off or set to max brightness. I initially thought that I might have just gotten a bad model, but after doing some quick Googling, I have found posts from other owners of the Acer Vero 514 reporting similar things. So it looks like this might be one of those fundamental design issues with this device. Not the biggest issue in the world, but it is a little annoying. Something else annoying are the speakers on this thing. And let's just say the speakers are generally what you would expect from a $500 laptop, which is my longabout way of saying it's not very good. Now, they're downfinding speakers, so that does put the Chromebook at a slight disadvantage, although even then it does feel like it's much quieter than it should be, and even at max volume, it's pretty quiet and it does get kind of tinny at max volume. Fortunately, the device comes with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack as well as Bluetooth, so there are ways to make up for the underwhelming speakers on this thing. What's not underwhelming though is the webcam on this thing. So it's a 1080p webcam and I'm currently using it to record this bit of the video and I'm also using the internal mic in the Chromebook by the way, so you'll get a sense of what it actually sounds like when you use this thing. And I don't know, I think it looks pretty good. We're not necessarily in the best lighting conditions. The window is in the background, as you can very much tell. And yeah, this is one of those conditions where the webcam should generally struggle, but I think it's doing pretty good. You can see my penguin pretty well. And yeah, I can certainly see myself using this for Zoom and other uh, web conferencing software, web conference software. So yeah, I, I'm actually pretty impressed with this. Also love that it comes with this webcam cover. I know that's not necessarily unique to this Chromebook, but I've always enjoyed having a physical tab that you can use to cover up the camera. But yeah, webcam, good stuff. Enough about physical hardware though, let's move on to performance. Since I don't really review a lot of devices on this channel, and it's been a while since I last bought one of these Chromebooks, I'm not going to go through that whole process of running multiple ben benchmarks and doing comparisons between various devices. That's, that's more for the professional reviewer class. What I am going to do is share that this Acer Vero 514 got a score of 309 in the speedometer 2.1 benchmark from browserbench.org. I'll have a link to the benchmark test in the links down below, so feel free to run that test on your device. It'll let you do a comparison between this device and your current device. Benchmarks aside, let's talk real experience of using the device. As far as web browsing goes, the experience is very smooth, fast, and snappy. With an Intel Core i3 and 8 gigabytes of RAM, I could have like 10 tabs open at once and wouldn't run into any issues whatsoever. Loading into video streaming sites like YouTube went without issue as well. Out of curiosity, I tried playing back a video on YouTube in 4K and the device just handled it like a champ. No dropped frames at all. Not that there's a good reason to play 4K footage on a 1080p screen like this, but it can do it. So you shouldn't have any problems watching Netflix, Hulu, Crunchyroll, etc. on this device, and same goes for web browsing. Like other Chromebooks, the Acer Vero 514 can run Android apps, and performance within these apps have been very smooth. Android apps like Google Play Books, LumaFusion Video Editor, and VLC all worked as expected. Android games like Crossy Road and GTA Vice City also worked without issue. 
Not sound a little bit like a broken record, but with the sort of specs found in this device, it's generally expected that Android apps, especially basic Android apps, will run pretty well on this thing. Now, performance may be a little bit more mixed when it comes to things like mobile games, but that has a lot more to do with how Android apps are being run within Chrome OS. For one, this configuration of the Acer Bureau 514 doesn't come with a touchscreen, which can be rough when trying to use apps that generally were made with the touchscreen in mind. And secondly, as I've mentioned a few times, this device does come with an Intel processor and a lot of Android apps and especially mobile games have been developed with the ARM processor in mind. So some of the more common mobile games like Call of Duty just can't be installed on this thing due to compatibility reasons. Since I brought up mobile games, let's move on to Steam gaming. Now it's always been possible to get Steam running on Chromebooks, but the process for doing it was often a little messy and required a little bit of tinkering. All that is starting to change though now that Chrome OS has started to roll out Borealis. Borealis, also known as Steam for Chromebook, is a project that Chrome OS in coordination with Valve have been working on to make it super easy to get Steam games running on Chromebooks. The idea here with this project seems to be that one day you'll be able to just get Steam onto your Chromebook by simply enabling some setting within the Chrome OS settings. It's very cool stuff and it's also very much a work in progress right now. So I believe this thing is only available to certain select Chromebooks right now. And the Acer Vero 514 happens to be one of those select Chromebooks. So of course I tried Steam for Chromebook on the Acer Vero 514. And I gotta say, I was pleasantly surprised to see how well it worked. Everything from getting it set up, to logging into Steam, to getting my Xbox controller to recognize once I had plugged it in, like all of it was seamless. And installing and launching games from my Steam library was pretty seamless too. And I tried out a variety of games, some of them worked well, others less so. I generally found that older titles like Portal and light indie titles like Doki Doki Literature Club ran without much issue on this Chromebook. I was even able to play through a bit of Who Killed Sonic, which was pretty fun. Now I suspect that some of my issues with certain Steam games probably had to do with the limited specs on my device. So if I was using an Acer Vero 514 with a slightly different configuration, maybe with an Intel Core i5 or an Intel Core i7, I suspect that some of the Steam games that I was having issue with here would have run better. Either way, for Steam gaming on the Intel Core i3 configuration of the Acer Vero 514, I generally recommend sticking to either light indie titles or older titles. Another feature with Chrome OS nowadays is the ability to run Linux applications, and not just command line tools, but GUI applications as well. LibreOffice, the Linux desktop version of VLC, and even the Linux desktop version of Firefox web browser all ran without issue on the Acer Vero 514. You wanna run basic Linux applications on this thing, the Acer Vero 514 can handle it. And something else that the Acer Vero 514 can do is multitasking. I could have five to 10 tabs open in a web browser while also having one to two Android apps and one to two Linux apps open in the background. And the device just handled it without slowing down. Experiences in multitasking can of course vary depending on your exact use case. That said, I think it is fair to say that the Acer Vero 514 can handle a level of multitasking as long as you keep things reasonable. Another area that can depend a bit on use case is battery life. Now, according to the Acer's official specs sheet, the battery in this thing should last around 10 hours. In my day-to-day -day use, I generally got around eight or so hours of battery life at medium brightness, basically an average workday. I'm more of a power user that uses Android and Linux apps and also does a bit of multitasking. If you're strictly using this device for web browsing and streaming, I can see this device's battery lasting for about 10 hours, maybe more. Battery life is an area where things gradually get worse with the usage and time, so it'd be concerning if I was only getting five hours or something like that. But eight to 10 hours of battery life on a newly opened device seems pretty respectable to me. Not that I'd stress too much about the battery in this thing, because if it does get worn out with time and usage, you can easily replace it. Acer's Vero lineup prides itself on extended life designs. The idea shows up in various areas of the device, but it shows most clearly in how repair friendly this device is. And I can confirm that that is indeed the case because I did personally try to open up the bottom cover of this thing to see what's what, and it was very easy to do. All I had to do was take out the 10 Phillips head screws and pry the bottom cover off. All the screws were in visible places, and there was none of that pulling off the rubber feet of the laptop to find the mysterious 11th or 12th screw or whatever. Which is something, by the way, that I don't understand why manufacturers keep doing. Why do you keep putting rubber feet on top of these screws? Especially when you know that these rubber feet do not go back on once you pull it off the device. It's, it's, uh, it's so frustrating. Thankfully, Acer didn't do that with the Acer Vero 514. Once again, it's supposed to be the repair-friendly design, which I kind of wish was the industry standard, but it isn't for some reason. Either way, with where we are now, this design gets a double thumbs up from me. That said, if you're equating 
repair friendly, with upgrade friendly, you're gonna be sorely disappointed with this device. Unlike with the Windows running Vero laptops, the Acer Vero 514's RAM is soldered on, so no upgrade path there. Based on reports, it sounds like the SSD in this thing is replaceable slash upgradable, but I am not entirely sure as to where it is in the device. Like, I think it's beneath this ribbon cable, but I'm not like 100% sure. And yes, I could have technically tried removing the ribbon cable to see what's what, but I am also a bit of a klutz and I kind of wanted to finish the video before, you know, breaking the Chromebook. So that's where we are with that. If anyone knows more than me, feel free to comment down below. What I can say is that this device is not super upgradable, but it is repair friendly. And I can appreciate that repair friendly design because this thing is going to be getting updates for a fairly long time. The Acer Vero 514 originally came out in mid 2022 and is set to get Chrome OS updates until June 2032. Which is exciting stuff, maybe not as exciting as what is going on outside my house right now with all the construction noise and all the beeping and all the, all the shouting and all that, like that, which is super exciting stuff, but not enough to distract me from telling you about these updates. Because this thing is not just getting Chrome OS updates, it's going to be getting Chromebook Plus updates. If you don't know what Chromebook Plus is, it's a new category of Chromebooks that will be getting features that will be exclusive to Chromebooks in this set category. A lot of these exclusive features are AI related and Chromebooks need to meet a certain set of specifications for these features to work well. Chromebooks that meet this set of specifications or criteria are essentially dubbed Chromebook Plus. The specs of the Acer Vero 514 have qualified it to be Chromebook Plus. Meaning that all these cool exclusive features that are only limited to a certain set of Chromebooks will be coming to the Acer Vero 514. How cool is that? Are all the things that I just went over cool enough for this Chromebook to get a recommendation from me though? Well, if you've seen the beginning of the video, yeah. Looking specifically at this configuration of Acer Vero 514, which comes in at the price of 499, at that price, I would say you're getting a lot with this Chromebook. Excellent build quality, a nice keyboard trackpad combo, and in my opinion, future-proofed specs. With an Intel Core i3 and eight gigabytes of RAM, I think this Chromebook is going to age nicely. Like I can see myself using this device five years from now and being as satisfied with it or almost as satisfied with it as I am today. That said, I'm not saying that this is the perfect Chromebook. Obviously, from the state of the video, the display is kind of dim, the speakers are underwhelming, and there's a weird cold wine issue with the backlight of the keyboard. And that's just some of my gripe with the Chromebook as it is. There are also features that do not come with the specific configuration of the Chromebook. It doesn't come with the touch screen, as I mentioned before. It doesn't come with a fingerprint reader. Uh, none of the models of the Acer Vero 514 come with a micro SD card slot. It doesn't, it's not convertible. Like there's a lot of stuff that this Chromebook does not have that other Chromebooks do have. Not that everyone needs that from a Chromebook. So if you're in the camp where you don't need the touch screen, you don't really care for the fingerprint reader, you don't really need a micro SD card slot, you're perfectly fine with a traditional clamshell style laptop. If you're in that camp and you understand the flaws of this device as you go in, this Chromebook is actually pretty solid. And for $499, if you, as long as you're the right user for this Chromebook, I think you're going to be more than satisfied with it. And at the discount price of $349.99, I think even more people are going to be satisfied with the Acer Vero 514. At that price point, the device's flaws are more more than bearable and there is no Chromebook in $350 price range that can match what this Chromebook has to offer. So at $499, I'd say that the Acer Vero 514 is a good option. At the $349.99 price range though, I'd enthusiastically recommend this as a good bang for the buck Chromebook. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys today. If you found this video helpful or informative in any way, shape, or form, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like. Thanks for watching.